What's up guys, welcome back to Outdoor Beards, where today we're building a paver patio. My particular patio is going to be a 14 foot diameter circle. Of course, you can change that and make it whatever size and shape you want. In our case, if you saw our last video, we've already removed the sod. So at this point, it's time to start digging. Digging a hole. There's no shortcut here. It's just hard manual labor. Unless you want to run tobacco or something, but I didn't want to spend that kind of money. So I offered my neighbor nothing in exchange for hard manual labor. He agreed to my terms and we got started. To calculate how deep you want to dig your hole, you need to take your paver thickness, in my case 1.7 inches, add 1 inch for your sand layer, and 4 to 8 inches for your base layer. So my total depth here is 8.2 inches, but I want my pavers to be sitting above the grass line, more, mostly for aesthetics. So I decided to go with a 7 inch deep hole, which will put my, my pavers sitting above the grass line by roughly 1 inch, and I think that's going to look really nice. The next step is to bring in your base layer. I suggest buying this from your local landscaping company. And it's called paver base or three quarter minus because the largest rock that you'll find in here is three quarters of an inch. Whoever you buy this from can also help you calculate how much you need. I ended up buying six yards, but I also have multiple projects going on. So if you're only gonna do the patio, you don't actually need six yards of paver base. I think I went through three and a half yards roughly for just the patio. When installing your base, you need to load the hole with four to six inches of base material and then compact it down. I tried to be frugal and tamp this down by hand, but after about 15 minutes of that, I went ahead and rented a compactor. Trust me, it is worth the money to rent a compactor. Go through this process a couple times and check for level as you go. Your goal is not to be level, but to have a slight slope for water runoff. In my case, I slope to the back corner of the yard. Once you're satisfied with your base layer, it's time to bring in the sand. We had our, our base layer delivered because it was six yards. For our sand, I only needed one yard, so I just borrowed a buddy's truck and went and picked it up. A quick tip with this, when you unload the stuff, unload it closer to your project. As you can see here, I'm like 10 or 12 feet away, and it caused me a lot of unnecessary travel. When you bring the sand in, you have to do what's called screeding. Take one inch thick pipes and lay them out in your project area roughly two to three feet apart. Then bring the sand in and pile it on and around these pipes. Now take a straight edge like a six foot level or a two by four, and you're going to scrape it across the pipes in order to create a nice flat surface for your pavers to sit on. The normal process here is to lay all of your sand, screed it, and then start laying your pavers, starting from one edge and working your way across. In my case, I wanted the two pavers in the middle to be perfectly centered, so my entire design would be centered within the circle. You don't have to do this, but I'm kind of obsessive and I can't really help myself. So in order to accomplish this, I screeded just one section of my sand all the way out to the middle, I strung some string and an X to find my exact center, and then I placed the two center pavers. Since I can't walk on the sand, I created a path of pavers out to the edge that I could walk on before I finished screening the rest of the project. When you take your pipes out of your sand, this is going to leave a line. Just take a little bit of sand, throw it in there. You can use either a concrete trowel or I just used a six inch putty knife to flatten that back up. The pavers we're using today are called Holland Tan and Charcoal Concrete Pavers. I purchased them from Lowe's, but I know you can get them from Home Depot as well. In the spring, they were on sale for 25 cents each, and they're normally 56 cents each. So sometimes if you can time out your project at the right time of year, you can save yourself some money. Making sure to only step on the bricks that I already laid down in that little pathway. I started laying the rest of the bricks out in the pattern that I chose. Make sure you are setting the pavers in place and not sliding them around. You don't want to like put them down and slide them over because it's going to push your sand around. And it's really helpful to have someone laying pavers out for you, because this is going to save you a ton of time and a lot of back pain. Once I laid out the bulk of my pavers, I needed to mark my outer edge. I took two stakes and tied them together with a seven foot rope and dragged them around the edge to create a line that I could follow with my perimeter pavers. Quick side note, if you decide to make the same patio, the diameter of 14 feet makes it so there are exactly 124 bricks around the perimeter and you don't have to cut one. I had done the math beforehand because my obsessiveness requires all the perimeter pavers to be the same size. Because I'm weird. Now that we have our perimeter in place, it's time for the fun part. I had to cut roughly 110 pavers to fit all along this edge. To do this, I purchased a DeWalt angle grinder with a masonry diamond blade. It cuts through these pavers like butter. The best way I found to do this is to hold the paver above where it's going and to mark it on the left and right side. Then at the table, I would use a straight edge to draw a line across the paver where I needed to cut it. For the most part, cutting all the pavers went really smoothly. There were a couple of small corner pieces that were a little bit of a hassle, but it went pretty fast and it came out really nice, so I'm real happy with it. Now that all our pavers are in place, we're on the home stretch. 
I'm gonna install some landscape edging around this just so the patio papers don't move during this next process. I cleaned off the patio with a leaf blower and then tamped the entire thing by hand. You're not trying to beat the patio into, <laughs> into submission with this. You're just trying to kind of get them to settle within the sand. This is also gonna reveal if you have any high or low spots. If you do, pry the papers out with a couple of screwdrivers, add a little bit of sand, take a little bit of sand out, whichever you need, and put the paper back in place. The final step is to put permasand between all the joints. This stuff acts like a brick mortar. You'll pour this on your patio, sweep it around with a wide broom to get it into all the gaps. Once you think all the gaps are full, tamp all the pavers with your hand tamper. This will cause them to vibrate and allow that sand to get deeper within those gaps. Then you're just gonna repeat this process until you don't see any more settling. Put any excess back in the bucket and lightly blow off the remaining excess with a leaf blower. It's important you don't leave any of this on top of your pavers because it could stain them. The last step is to wet down the patio. The moisture activates the polymers in the sand and binds them together. Once this dries, your patio's done. And look at that, we built ourselves a paver patio. Now grab a beer, sit back and enjoy. And as always, stay bearded my friends. Mm -hmm.